Welcome back to Back to History and to part 2 of Oriel Assassinations. This video contains assassinations and executions of the time shortly before or during the First World War. First on this list is the assassination of George I, King of the Hellenists. He became king upon the deposition of the unpopular King Otto. During his almost 50 year long reign he became loved by his people and managed to expand Greece. George had planned to abdicate in favor of his son after the celebrations of his golden jubilee which he would have celebrated in October 1913. However, on March 13, 1913, while in an afternoon walk in Thessaloniki, George was shot at a close range by Alexander Skinas. Skinas called himself a socialist and stated upon his arrest that he killed the king because he refused to give him money. George died instantly as the bullet hit his heart. The king would have celebrated his 50 year anniversary on March 30th, 1913. Next we have one of the most famous assassinations. The one of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg. Their assassination was one of the events leading to World War I. Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, visited Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina, in June 1914. In the morning while on their way to the town hall, a first assassin named Nedeliko Kabrinovic threw a grenade at their car. However, the bomb missed the royal couple, wounding the people in the following car. Upon arriving at the reception, the angry France shouted at the mayor of Sarajevo. Mr. Mayor, I came here on a visit and I am greeted with bombs. It is outrageous. Officials of the Archduke's party discussed how to continue with the royal visit and suggested that the couple should wait at the town hall until troops could be brought into the streets. However, the governor's general, Oskar Potiorek, replied with the following sentence. Do you think Sarajevo is full of assassins? Franz Ferdinand and Sophie decided to give up their planned schedule to visit the wounded from the bombing at the hospital. To ensure the couple's safety, it was decided that they should take a route which would lead straight to the hospital and with this avoiding the crowded city center. However, the driver of the car was not informed about the changed route and turned right at the Latin bridge in Sarajevo. Here enters the 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, who happened to be right near the Latin bridge. Princip was a member of the Black Hand, a Serbian ultranationalist secret organization. The Black Hands had planned this assassination and were spread around town on that day. As the driver had to stop the vehicle to turn around, Princip saw his chance. He walked up to the car, stepped on the footboard and shot Franz Ferdinand and Sophie. He hit Franz in the neck and the other bullet hit Sophie in the abdomen. Princip later stated that his intention had been to kill the governor sitting in the same car rather than Sophie. Sophie died after falling unconscious almost immediately on the way back to the governor's residence. Franz died roughly 10 minutes after her. Franz Ferdinand was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph, whose nephew he was. Upon hearing from the assassination, Franz Joseph apparently stated, For me, it is a relief from great worry. Next we have the assassination of Grand Duke Michael Alexandrovich of Russia. Michael was the younger brother of Tsar Nicholas II. On March 15, 1917, Nicholas II abdicated firstly in favor of his son but later changed it in favor of Michael. However, Michael declined the throne and he was never officially named emperor. In August 1917, guards surrounded Michael's villa where he was living with his wife Natalia. On orders of the Prime Minister Alexander Kerensky, both were put under house arrest. Nevertheless, the house arrest was lifted in September 1917. Michael planned to move his family to Finland, but their preparations were seen by Bolshevik sympathizers. And so, they were put under house arrest once again. After being freed in November, Michael, together with his secretary, Nicholas Johnson, was arrested for good in March 1918 and was sent to the city of Perm near the Ural Mountains. After being under house arrest for three months, the leader of the local secret police, Gavril Miasnikov, together with the Bolsheviks, hatched a plan to murder Michael. They managed to get into the hotel Michael was staying and convinced Michael to come with them. Johnson insisted on accompanying them, so all of the men drove to a nearby forest. Upon arriving in the forest, both men were fired at and died immediately. Next we have the execution of Michael's brother, Nicholas II of Russia. 
After the abdication, the Romanov family was offered exile in the United Kingdom by George V, who happened to be Nicholas's cousin. However, George took back his offer shortly after as advised by his government. On March 20, 1917, the provisional government decided that Nicholas, his wife Alexandra, and their five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei should be put under house arrest. Firstly, they were moved to the Alexander Palace in Tsarskoye, but were later moved to Tobolsk. After almost a year of house arrest there, Nicholas, Alexandra, and Maria were moved to Yekaterinburg, while Olga, Tatiana, and Anastasia stayed with Alexei since he was sick. On April 30, 1918, the first three Romanovs arrived in Yekaterinburg, where they were imprisoned in the Ipatiev House, which is also known as the House of Special Purpose. The remaining Romanovs arrived on May 23, 1918. Here the family were kept under even stricter conditions. With the news from the White Army coming closer to Yekaterinburg, the chief executor Yakov Yurovsky received an execution confirmation from Moscow. At around 2 a.m. the family was awoken and taken to the basement. Yurovsky then announced the decision to execute them and opened the fire. Nicholas was the first to die. Olga, Tatiana, Maria and Anastasia were all still alive after the first hail of bullets since they had jewels soon into their clothing. They were then stabbed with bayonets and finally shot at a close range into their heads. Together with the family, four of their staff members were executed as well. Only one day after the execution of Nicholas II and his whole family, Grand Duchess Elizabeth Fyodorovna, who happened to be the sister of Nicholas's wife, was assassinated. Elizabeth was arrested earlier in 1918 and was sent to Perm. There, more members of the family joined her after their arrest. Along with the other members of the Romanov family, one of their secretaries and one of Elizabeth's sisters from the convent were held captive with them as well. During the night of July 18, 1918, the whole group was gathered and brought to an abandoned iron mine, which had a 66 feet deep pit. All of the prisoners were beaten before being thrown into the pit. Elizabeth was the first one of them. After that, hand grenades were thrown down the pit, but only one of the prisoners was killed through this. One of the killers reported that they heard Elizabeth along with the others singing an orthodox hymn from the bottom of the pit. A second grenade was thrown, but the singing continued. Lastly, a large amount of brushwood was shoved into the opening and was set alight. Three months after the execution, the bodies were still in a good condition. Most were thought to have suffered a slow death from their injuries from being thrown into the shaft or from starvation rather than the fire. Elizabeth is believed to have died from her injuries, but she still found the strength to banish the head of Prince John Konstantinovich. These were five assassinations or executions. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you might like the first part. It is linked in the description box. See you next time at Back to History.